Good morning, family. It's your brother in Christ, Diamond Dustification from YouTube again. And today I wanted to make a video in response to a string of emails I received and went back and forth with with a subscriber of mine who is undergoing a lot of physical illness and uh, attacks against his faith, okay? And you can see the three responses he gave me. I did not include the things that I said to him, but suffice it to say, I did reply to him. And I'm going to read them, but but before I do, I want to point out the three major points within his his emails that pop, that stand out. He says that I've cried out to God for relief and received no answer. Why? How do I know when God is communicating with me? And how do I know that it's not a coincidence when he does? Okay, those are the three major questions that I saw, but we're going to read these emails anyway. And if you have a response that you feel you're being led to post from the Lord, feel free to comment down below. I don't really know how to word this, he begins. I've watched many of your videos and seeing your salvation videos, it's encouraging. It's late at night and I can't sleep. These physical illnesses that have been ruining everything for me. I have many times been on my knees absolutely begging God to relieve me or even just give me an answer. I cry and cry out to God to the point where I'm basically vomiting. I'm so desperate for an answer, but I get absolutely nothing. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to skim over that. Consider how desperate he is. If, if if he's crying out that much to the point where he's vomiting, on his knees praying day in and day out, this is somebody that truly is desperate, and that should not be overlooked. It just doesn't seem like God exists at this point. Now, this is not him saying that he doesn't believe in God. This is him saying that he's under attack. Okay, I believe this person, if he, especially if he's watching my videos, is well familiar with the gospel, and I am sure that he has put his faith in the gospel, okay? However, I can't say with any certainty because that's not my place. But <clears throat> I don't feel that it's necessary for us to attack his faith because Satan is clearly doing a doing his job at that right now, okay? What he's struggling with is like he's asking himself questions like, why would God allow me to go through this? What What is the point of this? I don't see any point into it. Why isn't he healing me? But seeing videos like yours makes me think otherwise. I'm seriously just wanting to... I've begged God for an answer so many times and I've gotten absolutely nothing. No answer, nothing. I don't know what else I can do. I feel like you're my last resort since you seem to have communion with God. I'm begging you, please pray for me so that I may receive an answer, but otherwise I'm just seriously wanting to die at the moment. Please, I beg you. First things first, sometimes no answer is an answer. If you've prayed for relief over and over again, and no relief has come, it could be that God does not intend or want, want you to have relief at that moment. <clears throat> now, when I say that, I understand that that is a very easy way to insert a sense of bitterness into a person, okay? Because I've had people tell me that about my own illnesses, and instead of finding my faith emboldened by that, I find myself embittered by it, angry about it, okay? But there may be an important reason, and I don't know what it, what it is, I wish I could tell you, but I don't know, as to why you're undergoing these illnesses. I want to remind you that there were many people that were healed by Jesus, and there were also many that were not. The blind man in particular, which we're going to talk about, was born blind. And when, he was, and, and when the disciples asked him what sin did this man commit that he was born with such an ailment, Jesus said neither he nor his parents committed any such sin, but he was born blind for the glory of the kingdom of God. Now we have to remember that our lives here are finite. Everything that we have, everything that we own, everything that we do is but dust in the wind. And the only thing that has any true value is that which we do for the kingdom. And the only way we can do anything for the kingdom is by yielding to the Holy Spirit and allowing him to guide us, as well as yielding to the will of God. Anything else is just fleshly appetite whether you're, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're watching movies and listening to music all day, that's not necessarily a sin unless you allow it to, you know, interrupt and get in the way of your relationship with God to a point that you, you stop praying, you stop reading your Bible and all those things and you discard those things that are healthy for your soul. It becomes sinful at that point. I'm not saying you're going to go to hell for it. Obviously not. You cannot lose your salvation. But you most certainly will feel the effects of it because the further away you walk from God and the things that he would have you to do, the more distant he's going to seem to you. You know, you're not going to be feeding your soul on those things that are, 
are necessary for a good and healthy relationship with him because you're not paying attention. And when you're like that, you're wandering further and further into the darkness like a stray light, a little tiny candle going out into the thickest darkness you've ever seen. And every single demon flying around in that darkness is going to see you. And they're going to waylay you with everything they possibly can. If they can't ensnare you with doubts and attacks on your faith, then they'll go the other direction with distractions. You like watching movies all day, don't you? You like you like uh, communion with people <clears throat> that are outside of the faith, right? Anything that they can, just so that you don't read your Bible, so that you're not prepared to, uh, so that you're not prepared to preach the kingdom when the time comes, when uh, when you have a commission that pops up. Anything they can to weaken your faith walk. Now, illnesses can be used for a variety of reasons, okay? One such reason, uh, for Paul's sake, was to keep him humble, to keep him seeking after God, because he says, my, my glory is enough, my grace is sufficient, okay? And that's one of the things that we have to keep in mind about illnesses. Now, I suffer from a lot of illnesses myself. One of the reasons it's taken me as long as it has to get this video up for you is because of that. Uh, I have stomach issues. I have weight issues. That is to say that I'm 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 very skinny. I don't have I, I need to put on weight. I'm losing weight. Uh, I'm in a lot of pain and aches, and I take I have been prescribed. Uh, uh, I've been pres prescribed a lot of pain meds to deal with it. Now, if you know what you, you, I'm not going to bother saying what types of pain meds, but let's just say I'm on a variety of medications that have been prescribed to me. And pain meds are nothing but a way to treat symptoms. They're not a, they're not a cure. So basically what that tells me is that I'm going to have to live with this for the rest of my life, okay? And sometimes when it gets so bad when I'm laying in bed, I'm in so, so much pain and aching and lack of sleep that I start to wonder, am I going to die tonight? I ask myself that question when I'm laying there. And I even get excited about it. <laughs> a lot, you know, you say that to a lot of Christians and they'll, they'll put their hand over their mouth. How could you say such a thing? Well, it's no different than what Paul said, you know. Philippians 1, 21 through 24. For, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, but, the, but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what shall I choose? I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. So what Paul is essentially saying there is like, yeah, I would rather, uh, you know, die and go, go home and be with Christ, but it's more needful for my brothers and sisters that I'm here to serve the kingdom of God. Now, some people, when you say that to them, they get embittered by it. They go, well, I've served the kingdom of God for so and so many years, and I think I've done more than enough. I'm ready to go. Okay. I've been in that predicament as well. I've suffered with this for such and such many years. Why do I have to continue going for it? And then you start you know, beating yourself down with all these other people that may have been healed, that uh, may have, uh, that may seem to be receiving more blessing than you, that may have gone home earlier than you, you know, like my father's brother was a miraculous event. Uh, he died at, uh, I, I can't remember the precise age off the top of my head, but I know he was, I think he was in like his early, early 20s, give or take around there. But uh, I've been embittered by that, you know. Despite the fact that what my mother and father saw after his death is one of the reasons that, one of the great miracles that has uh, drew me into the faith, you know, their testimony. It's like, what? why did he get to go home and I didn't? And he's not the only one. Sometimes I envy the wicked too, like in the Psalms, okay? Psalm 73.3 and 73.13, For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. You know, he's basically saying, why did I bother to do all this if, if being faithful is nothing but a detriment to my life? It's very hard to keep a perspective on heavenly things. Okay? Because... While the heavenly things are in the distance, the suffering on this earth is right before us and happening right now. Go, you know, you, you put your hand on a hot stove and you're going to have a hard time staying in prayer while your hand is burning. And that's essentially what we're trying to do here. Our hands are on a hot stove because we are beset by sin, the flesh, and Satan every single day, trying to weaken and destroy our relationship with God. Okay? And it's... And the only way that we can have any kind of victory is by yielding to the Lord and following after his will. 
Okay, so, you know, a lot of things can distract us from doing just that, okay? Excuse me. A cup must be filled wrestling, wrestling against the flesh. The motions of the flesh, sin, and satanic temptations always tend to begin small. And while there are too many variables for me to hit the nail on the head precisely for each individual person, you might say it starts when we say something along the lines of this. I'm sorry, Father, that is speaking to God in prayer, but I don't have enough time to really pray to you today, besides this. Or read the Bible, with all the work I have to do around the house. The kids, go, the kids are going crazy, bills are piling up, I'm just not in the right headspace for this. And then the next day you say, I'm sorry I didn't do better on that commission I was given, but I would, I would have if you would only heal me from these bodily assaults. I could have done it. I also didn't mean to slip back into watching movies, but I just needed a break. Something to distract me from all this noise and pain. Okay? Now, again, there's nothing wrong with watching movies or listening to music or any of those things. But again, you don't want those things to pile up and distract you from your time with God. Let me just put it to you this way. Here's the difference between the things of the Spirit and the things of the flesh. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Okay? Whereas the fruit of, of the flesh is this. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings. Okay? So, which of these things are you exposing yourself to? Is it the things of the spirit or the things of the flesh? A lot of movies, a lot of music, and video games are the things of the flesh. Okay? So if you're pouring all of that into the cup that is your soul, or if you're pouring all that into the water that you're using to, uh, shall we say, water your to sprinkle that wa that kind of water onto your spirit. Let's say your spirit was a was a tree. Okay, what kind of water are you giving it, or, or where are you extending your roots? Is it going to be to that dirty, filthy water or the cl cl clean water? You can go to the dirty, filthy water. You're not going to lose your salvation because God takes care of His own. But it certainly isn't going to be a fun time. And how does that imp uh, apply to uh, apply to the suffering that we're going through? That is you, me, and many others out there in the body of Christ. How does that uh, affect us? Well, one of the reasons that we begin to miss God and his movements in our life is because we are not genuinely paying attention. We're just what we really we're not really paying attention for an answer from God. What we're paying attention for is for a miracle from God. We're looking for miracles. <clears throat> An answer from God would be essentially maybe God said, I, I have a purpose for this illness and I'm not going to heal you. Maybe his silence is the answer. But if we keep looking for an answer even after we receive one in some cases, it might be because we're not really looking for an answer from God, but we're looking for an answer that we like. We're looking for what we want, not what God wants. We're not yielding to him, okay? Now, I can't say that that is his purpose for you. I don't know. But I do know, but what I can tell you is that whatever grace you see in me, from you know, that is to say my yielding to the Spirit from my videos, I have been in much suffering myself, and I have received no healing, okay? I go back and forth between doctors. I've had a lot of uh, cr my subscribers and other Christians try to offer me things that, that I could use to heal it and s things like that. And even Paul himself. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You see, our spirit needs to be nurtured and we do that by yielding to the holy spirit of god in our lord and savior jesus christ we spend time with him in prayer bible reading and all these things now i think on some level you're doing that because you found my videos and you watched a lot of them so you might be wondering to yourself well i'm doing all that and i still have a feel like i have a bad relationship with him and I can understand why you feel that way because if you're if you're suffering as much as as, as much as it seems to be when uh, through that email, I'd imagine you're, you spend a lot of time in bed and are just in a lot of pain and agony. And when you're feeling like that, when you're at your lowest, 
it's sometimes hard to accept any answer we received except the one we want to hear. Okay. And I wish I knew how to make that better for you, but I really don't. I don't think anybody that does and anybody that says they do, I would question quite significantly. Because the truth is, is that God has a plan for each and every one of us and his, his ways are past knowing. Okay. But I want to, I want to remind you of a couple things in the Bible. First and foremost, during the Great Commission, even then, after everything they had seen, what, some of the 11 disciples doubted. So the doubts that you have, that's not a condemnation to you. You know what the gospel is, 1 Corinthians 15, okay? And I've also said it in many of my videos. We remember Paul's thorn. He prayed and prayed. <coughs> I sought the Lord twice, thrice that it might depart from me. Why, did he, why was he given this messenger of Satan to buffet him? So that he would not be exalted above measure. And God responded eventually saying, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And this is a response to us as well. It's not just to Paul, it's to us. The Bible holds everything that the Lord would say to us. Okay. Paul wished to go home rather than stay, we already talked about. And then there's the blind man, the man that was born blind and was healed for the kingdom. The reason he was born that way is for the, for the sake of the kingdom of God. There was the lepers that were healed. We're not cleansed. We're not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Only one of them came back. Thy faith has made thee whole. Okay? It wasn't the healing that made him whole. It was the faith that he had in, in the Lord Jesus. And then we can tell the difference between the works of the flesh and the spirit, what we're filling ourselves with. We don't want to envy the wicked because they're going to pass away into dust. And blessed are those that have not seen and yet believe anyway. Okay? <clears throat> How can we tell when God is communicating with us and in what way does he communicate with us? I lay down in my bed and I go into deep prayer. I test the spirits, all the things that I need to do. And it is almost like a small voice that whispers unto my spirit the things that I need to hear. Many times when I'm in this level of communion with him, I get replies that I don't want to hear. I need to hear them. I don't want to hear them. They, uh, they tell me of the things that I am doing to distract myself from those things that are better. And, and they, they tell me of how I am quenching the spirit. Things that I've gotten wrong, but not in a, con a condemning way. You see, this, the spirit does not come to us to bring condemnation. But it does want us to yield to that which the Lord would have us to do. And we fail on, on levels and in ways that we don't often see. Many, many times every day. And there's always things that we could have done better. Now I can spend all of my time uh, lamenting that or I can go forward and try to do better next time. And that's what would I do. I, I, if I, I fall down seven times, I get up because I have the Lord in my corner and my steps are numbered. He knew those falls long before I had them. Other ways that we communicate with God is by filling ourselves with those things that are meat, by reading the Bible, by communicating with our brothers and sisters, by praying, not just for the things that we want at that moment, but praying that for what God wants, okay? And accepting that answer. I would encourage you to try praying for what God desires for your life instead of praying for healing. Whatever is your will, let it be done. That was the lesson Job learned. Now you have many of your brothers and sisters out there that are going through a lot of suffering. Some of them were born blind, just like that man. Others are crippled. And then there's some like me that can barely get out of bed on certain days. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn here or say that I'm better or worse than you are, by the way. 
But one of the most important things that we need to learn, and even the Bible says so, is that these things are accomplished in our brothers and sisters as well. We don't want to feel isolated and alone. But since the churches have gone to hell, basically, many of them, <clears throat> it feels that way. Because we don't have that communion that we're supposed to have. You know? And sometimes it's because we shrink back from communion because we're so depressed that we just we don't want to be there. You know, we don't want to be among people that seem to have it all together. You know, it's like, where's my yellow brick road, we might say to ourselves, when we look at all these Christians that are in communion. And But the problem is, and, and that's one of the problems, like nobody's willing to share what they're going through. They, they all want to put on this front that everything's fine. And in so doing, they alienate the people that are more honest with their sufferings. Or maybe they're not more honest about them, but they, they, they hide it. It's like, yeah, everything's great. It's not, though. It's not. And it's okay that it's not. Okay? Another thing, the last thing I'm going to tell you is that we're at the end. Okay? I know that you're probably so sick of hearing that. But we are. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you when or that it's going to be this year or next year or anything else like that. What I am going to tell you is that I don't know how close we are, but we're close. And that means for us that Satan is going to go into high gear. And when the body is suffering, the body is suffering. We are all one in the body of Christ. So if we're all one body and we get a burn on the leg, we're all going to feel it. And that's what's happening right now. The body is the body is suffering. The church is suffering. And I'm sure that Christ is right there with us through every bit of it. He is. Of course he was. He, he was when he was on that cross. The Spirit groans for us. We are not alone. Whatever you're going through, don't think that you that God has forgotten you or that you have no purpose. I don't know how crippled you are, whether you're in like you're trapped in your bed or if you can barely function. But no matter what. Whether even if the only thing that you can do is pray, God has you here for a reason. And when you finally do die, and I mean die as you should die in God's timing, you will know what that reason was in full, and you will be rewarded for it. So continue praying, commune with God, sit in the quiet, and try to take your focus off all the things that you want and desire and give in to what God wants and desires. Open yourself to him. Test the spirits. He will never condemn you. He's not going to beat you over the head. But he will bring to light those things that need to be brought to light. And they're not going to be pleasant. It's going to convict you. Okay? And that's a good thing. Many times when I've been convicted, unfortunately, I don't respond as I ought to. Sometimes I ignore it, and it gets worse. Because if we're not yielding to God, we're going after the flesh. There's no in-between. You can't ignore God and not go after the flesh. We are in a war, and uh, there's been a part of me that's been bitter even about that. Okay? Okay? So God bless. Amen and amen.